Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jackie and let's get started. For DIY number one, I'm going to begin with one of these beehive wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. And yes, I have little bees on my nails. I thought it would be super cute for this video. So I'm just going to take this jute twine from the tool bench section of the Dollar Tree and I'm going to wrap this whole wreath form with this jute twine. Now this jute twine is not the best quality. It sure gives you a good bang for your buck, but my goodness, it made so many fuzzies, which I had fun later removing them. I'll show you that in a bit. But here I'm just wrapping it a couple times to show you how I did it. And I just went and watched my favorite show until it's all done. Now I got a new lighter. <laughs> now we're going to have fun. So <laughs> look at this. Okay. So this was a little bit uh, extreme when I first got the flame going but all you got to do is just kind of shake it a little bit shimmy a little bit and it just it goes out it goes out pretty pretty easily pretty quickly and just like that all the fuzzies are gone and it gives it another tone of color so now this is some fabric that i found at the dollar tree it's of a honeycomb pattern so i'm going to place my wreath form on top to kind of measure what i need i'm going to snip off all the obvious excess cloth like this and then I will take this piece, place on a piece of parchment paper and take my Mod Podge, which I'm using the dishwater one because I live in Florida. And for a wreath, I really need, need this to be waterproof for me. <laughs> so here's nice and dry, removing my fabric from my parchment paper and it removes pretty easily. Now remember, you use parchment paper, not wax paper. They are different and both are sold at the Dollar Tree. So now I'm taking this wire jute twine, I'm going to create a hanger before I go any further. So I'm just going to snip off a piece that I think I'll need and I'll just tie it to the very top of my wreath form like this. Now once I get this on, then I'll go ahead and set my wreath form back on top of my Mod Podge fabric and I'm going to snip off the excess like this. Now I'm going to take some of the Beacon Fabric Tack glue, fabric glue. And I'm going to, I'm going to go around this whole edge, this whole piece on the edge like this. And now I'm ready to set my wreath form on top. It should fit perfectly. And now to make sure that everything is going to dry well and cure, I'm taking my craft clips, my mini ones, and I'm going to clip the fabric to the wreath form in on all the different joints in this manner. Make sure everything is, is going to dry well. I don't want anything falling apart on me. So once I get this done, then I'll set this aside to dry and cure, which only took a few hours. Now I'm removing all the craft clips and yes, everything is dried beautifully. Now I'm going to go in with these various assorted florals. Some are from Walmart, some are from the Dollar Tree and some of these Craftwood 3D bees. So now I'm just taking my EMT shears and removing all the florals off their stems. And I'll just take my time to add the florals, the bees and some bows. And here's how it looks and a closer look at the final reveal. And here it is on my front door. Super cute. This video is a part of the Unbe Wreathable DIY Challenge. And I'm hosting today with my sweet friends C from CJ DIY and Christine from DIY Craftaholic. And there's a fantastic playlist included. And we are all creating a bee wreath and some bee DIYs. So be sure to click the link in my description box and enjoy the playlist. For DIY number two, the Dollar Tree has these new craft garland with wooden beads. And I'm going to go in with the Waverly Chalk paint in the color Maze, give them all a full base coat. Now I'm going to go in with these Artex paint markers. And now using the color black, I'm just going to outline these lines that are for the bees and the little antennas as well. And now I'm going to take some of the Waverly Chalk paint in the color Snow White and I'm going to paint their wing portion. Now here I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on the tip of my jute twine that came with this kit. And I'm going to string a bead and create a knot on both ends. That way this bead stays in place. And then I'll go ahead and string the rest of these pieces. So I'll do a bead and I'll do another bead and another bead and another bead until I get them all strung on this piece of jute twine. Now the last one, I'll go ahead and do another couple knots to keep it in place. 
and of course the loop on the other end which I had to cut to string all these pieces on. Now I went ahead and painted both sides of the bees because you know how sometimes a garland they'll flip around. So now here I'm taking these two types of bee ribbons from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to snip off a certain length. I don't remember how long they were, maybe two feet or so. And as well as this other ribbon, this one's more of a honeycomb pattern. Now here I dovetail all the ends, but you can actually skip this part because I'll show you what I did later. So I'm going back with my Artex fine point pen and I'm just going to create a bunch of little dots just to accentuate the wings, just to give it another dimension of interest. Look how cute. And now here I'm taking my two ribbons, which I was going to tie them together in this manner. I made the, the yellow ribbon a little smaller than the white ribbon. But then I decided to just do them separately. So I'm just tying them on the jute twine in knots like this. And I'll do one type of ribbon and then I'll do the other type of ribbon on the other side of the wooden beads. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So I just do this down the whole garland, or should I say, uh, jute twine part of the garland. And I'll just create this in knots. Now I wasn't crazy about the way it was just staying open. I mean, it was okay, but now I decided to use my fabric tech, fabric glue, and just kind of adhere both of these pieces together onto each other just to make these ribbons double sided so that's another thing I wasn't crazy that everything was just one sided these ribbons were one sided so now I went ahead and dovetailed all the ends again and here I'm adding some little bows to each of the little bees and of course I did both sides because sometimes these bees will flip around when you hang them up and now I decided to go in with my Tim Holtz distressing ink and my applicator and go along all the edges of the bees on both sides again. And now I was happy with the complete look. And here's how it looks. And a closer look at the final reveal. And here it is hanging on my mantle. Super cute. For DIY number three, I'm going to use one of these wood rounds from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use these half wood beads that I got from Amazon. And I'm just going to place them around this whole wood circle like this, allow it to dry. Now I'm going to go in with the chalk paint from the Dollar Tree, give it a full coat going with the maize waverly chalk paint as well i'm taking my chunky chippy brush from the dollar tree and i'm going to distress all of these half wood beads in this manner i want it to be a little bit strong a little bit more profound in my dry brushing so like this allow that to dry now i'm going to take one of these collars from christmas time from the dollar tree i'm going to paint it with the chalk paint again from the dollar tree and i'm going to go in with the maize chalk paint as well and using my chunky chippy brush I'm just going to go along this whole edge on the bottom and the top of this Christmas tree collar. And now we'll set aside allow this to dry in the meantime I'm taking two wooden beads and this bamboo skewer and I'm going to take a little bit of this super glue wood glue and add it to the tip of my bamboo skewer and add my larger bead and then my teeny tiny bead on top set this aside allow this to dry and now I'm going to take one of these DIY Dollar Tree ceramic paint your own watering can kits well that's a mouthful <laughs> we're not going to use this paint we're also going to use two of these flower tea light holders and one of these little flower pot DIY paint your own kits as well and these little mini flower pots made out of wood and I'm going to go in with these two colors from Waverly the maize and the moss until I paint them up like this. And then I also use some of my Artex markers to outline the flowers and also the leaves. So these two colors work perfectly. Now I'm gonna go back to my wooden beads with my bamboo skewer and using my EMT shears, I'm removing all the excess bamboo skewer, make sure it's nice and clean on top. And now I'm ready to put together my pedestal. So I'm going to take some E6000 and I'm just going to go around the top of this what was a Christmas tree collar. Now it's going to be the foot to my pedestal. So here it is nice and dry and cured. Now I'm taking these random florals which I use differently later on. Right now I'm just staging what I think I want. And you know all this is just a process. 
So now I'm going to add all my painted ceramic pieces, placing them on the top of this pedestal and also these little flower pots. Now I'm going to take some teeny tiny pieces of floral foam, sticking them into the flower pots, and then some larger ones for the watering can and for the larger flower pot as well. Once I get that all done, then I'm just going to go in with my florals, which are these yellow wildflowers that you see on the left side. And now I'll get to add all these flowers into all my containers. And then look how cute. Oh, they are so adorable, all filled with these beautiful flowers and the greenery that comes with it. I did not waste anything. Now I'm going to set this aside. And now I'm going to take one of these bell cloches. These are for the garden from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to add a dab of glue to the top or to the bottom of my beads and I'm going to place it on top to make the top for the cloche. Allow that to set. In the meantime, I am taking these B mini lights that I got from Amazon, adding the batteries to it. You need three AA batteries, making sure the lights work. Woohoo! Pretty bright, but so cute. Now I'm just going to unravel these. They are a little bit tied up. And now I'm going to place them in my garden, just sporadically, no really, no rhyme or reason, just kind of placing them anywhere because I want this to look like a little wonderland of magical bees everywhere. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but you guys understand. <laughs> You'll see it in a minute. Now I'm just going to add this battery pack to the bottom, which later I ended up putting it under my ceramic flowers. Now here I'm putting my cloche on top and I didn't show it but I ended up adding those greenery pieces to the outside of the cloche. And here's how it looks with the lights off and here's how it looks with the lights on and a closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number four, I'm going to use two of these Dollar Tree crates and some antique wax by Waverly and also I ended up doing a tray as well. Now I'm going to take my wood glue by super glue and I'm going to adhere these three pieces together in this manner. Allow this to set and cure. In the meantime, I'm going to take some floral foam and I'm going to use my Dollar Tree paint scraper, also known as a five in one painter's tool. And I'm just going to snip this down the middle widthwise. I don't need this too thick. And I'll just go ahead and fill all these in with floral foam like this. And now using some hot glue, I'm going to add some floral moss to all of these containers in this manner. And now I'm going to take two sets of these nesting hexagon shadow boxes from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to paint them with these two colors. And once they are nice and dry, then I'm going to take some more of my super glue wood glue. And I'm going to do a nice thick bead down one side and place it against my crate. And again, I'm going to utilize my mini craft clips to keep everything in place while the glue sets. So I'll repeat the same process on the other side. Just do a nice bead of thick glue and place it on and use my craft clips to keep it in place. Now I'm going to take my smaller hexagon, which I only use three. I had four, but I only use three for this. So now I'm going to add another couple beads of glue and I'm going to place this one on the very top in between the two larger of these hexagons. And for this one, I'm using my larger clips because it needs a little bit more strength to hold it in place. Allow this to dry completely. Here's how it looks. Now it's nice and dry. Now I'm removing all the craft clips and now I can begin embellishing this. So I'm going to begin by using my hot glue gun and some yellow glue sticks and creating some faux honey, making some nice thick drips, making it look delicious and sweet, like these are just dripping out like that. Now I'm gonna use some of these florals, these wildflowers, these green garland and these berries, and also these spike flowers. And I use a set of Fairyland Garden pieces and these plastic bees from Amazon. And here's how it looks in a closer look at the final reveal. And here it is on the base of my fireplace. For DIY number five, I'm going to take one of these Dollar Tree water pitchers and a pack of these rub-on transfers, 
that are on parchment paper and I'm going to cut out these bees with the wreaths around them and I'm just going to apply these onto my little picture. I'm going to utilize some painters tape so I'm going to set this rub on where I want it and then add painters tape to keep it in place because this kind of parchment paper likes to move around quite a bit. And then I started rubbing these onto my picture with one of my Cricut spatulas. But you know what? The best thing for these rub-on transfers is your fingernail. Good old fingernail. Yeah, this works much better. Look at that. So much better. And just like that, everything's transferred onto my little picture. And of course, I did both sides because I had two of the transfer pieces. And here I'm removing the excess parchment paper. And look how adorable. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. <laughs> now I'm ready to do some embellishing. And of course, got to use some yellow hot glue to create the faux honey that's coming out of this little pitcher. It's just stripping out the front. Oh my goodness, these bees, they are so messy. <laughs> so I just go along this whole edge all the way around. And then I'll just go ahead and add a piece of floral foam inside this dry add this to the inside kind of push it in there and then I'll add my florals and I'll add some bees and that is it for this one super cute here's how one side looks here's the other side and a closer look at the final review if you're on Instagram I invite you to follow me on there here's my QR code and here's my QR code for my TikTok. here is my handle for my Pinterest I do have a Facebook crafting group. I invite you to come join us there as well. And now we're at the final reveal. Let me know what you guys think and which one's your favorite one. Well, I'd like to take a moment and thank Christine from DIY Craftaholic and C from CJ DIY for inviting me to co-host with them in this fun challenge. You guys know I love the bees and I truly enjoy myself creating for the bees. Oh my goodness, I just love them. And speaking of bees, there is a playlist included in this challenge. So don't forget when you're done watching this video, head on over to my description box, click the link to the playlist and I'll also pin it in my comments for easy access and enjoy it. There's going to be so much inspiration, beautiful DIYs, fantastic ideas, tons of content. You guys are going to love it. We're each creating one wreath 
and some DIYs. So you can't go wrong. Have at it, have fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy day to watch my video. I really, really, truly appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it and it does help my channel to grow. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you enjoy bees and you want to see more, definitely subscribe because there's more coming. And until my next video, stay healthy, safe, and strong and have a great, great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.